Now that's cold, but it's still about a thousand times hotter than what we actually want to get it to. Yeah, so we actually want to get the atoms colder, but how do we actually do that, Lincoln? Okay, well, at some point, the lasers run out of puff. We can't actually get atoms colder than about a hundred millionths of a degree above absolute zero. We want to be less than one millionth of a degree. Now, laser cooling is this really tricky process that, that, that Chris just described. And uh, Chris's old boss won the Nobel Prize for uh, w working out how laser cooling worked. But the process that gets us the rest of the way from that, from that hundred millionths of a degree down to less than one, that's a really familiar process. And I've got an example right here. So no, no food and drink in the lab, but imagine that um, there's some coffee in my coffee cup here, and if I just wait, it's going to get colder. Now, thanks, Chris. Okay. Mmm, <laughs> steamy. <laughs> um, now, our atoms are in a vacuum tank here, which is basically like an excellent thermos flask. If we wait, they won't by themselves get colder. Um, but if I want to make my cup of coffee get colder faster, I can just blow on it and I'll get rid of the hot atoms, and the ones that are left, on average, will be colder. This is called evaporation, and you know it well. It's why you feel cold when you're, when you're wet and you've got, um, you've got water evaporating off you, and it's carrying away heat and cooling you down, or your coffee, but it works just as well for atoms. It works as well, we haven't found anything yet that we can't cool with evaporation, and there's also no known lower limit on getting things cold with evaporation. Well, except for one sort of obvious limit, which is that when you've evaporated your last atom away, you haven't got anything left to be cold. <laughs> and maybe that's how things went in the early years, right? But, um, so, Chris, can you tell us maybe about what actually happens in here to make this evaporation happen? So, first thing we do is when we have the atoms laser cooled, we trap them. So we use magnetic fields and laser fields to trap the atoms and we hold them basically in free space. And then what we do is we gently lower the height of the trap, so the trap you can consider as a bowl, and the atoms are confined in this bowl, and then we lower the height of the bowl, and the hot atoms bouncing around will go over the lip of the bowl, and the remaining atoms will re-thermalize by collisions, they'll collide into each other, and end up at a lower temperature. And in that process, we can actually achieve temperatures that are now a billionth of a degree above absolute zero, so much, much colder. And in fact, the coldest matter anywhere in the universe. That we know about. Should we give it a try? Sure, yeah. You wanna see some cold atoms? Okay, so you've seen how we make atoms really cold, but then how do we know we've got them cold? How do we, how do we measure these cold atoms? Well, we take pictures of them, um, and we take pictures of them using lasers, like a flash photo, where we see the shadow of the atoms uh, lit up by laser light, um, onto what is basically um, a digital camera. I've got an example here. Um, in fact, I'm gonna make you a fresh set, but they'll appear in a minute uh, while we cool some atoms down. But here's a picture we took only a minute ago. Um, and you can see this blob here is a cloud of very cold atoms that we've, that we've dropped. They've fallen under gravity, and as they're falling, they're expanding. And by measuring how big they've got, by measuring this diameter here, we can work out how fast those atoms were bouncing around inside that cloud. Um, so, uh, and by working that out, we can tell how cold they are. Oh, so how cold is this cloud, Lincoln? Um, I reckon that for a diameter of about that, which is, um, oh, and there's a fresh cloud now, um, a, bit less than, uh, a bit less than a millimetre, um, we can estimate that that temperature is less than 10 millionths of a degree above absolute zero. So we're close to Bose-Einstein condensation. So Chris, what's this good for? So when you have matter this cold, the atoms are actually dominated by their quantum properties. And what the research we're trying to do uh, involves studying the quantum properties of atoms so that we might actually be able to use them someday to build new types of devices, new types of sensors, new types of electronics.